I'm going to be talking to Dr. Catherine Hickson, who is the CEO of Alberta Number no. One, a geothermal project uh, south of Grand Prairie in Alberta. And they've recently tested a uh, oil and gas disposal well that they think has the high enough temperatures to generate electricity. And that's which is very exciting. Uh, so we're going to talk to Catherine. Welcome to the interview. Thank you very much. Why don't we start with an overview of the project, please? Well, it, it's very exciting. I was born and raised in Alberta. I now live in British Columbia, and I have worked globally in the geothermal business, both from a greenfield as well as a, a mature, actually operating uh, resource perspective. So it's kind of fun for me to be in Alberta, back in Alberta. and. And why it's interesting is because Alberta has an enormous resource. And that, in, that resource is for both direct use as well as electrical generation. And so to be able to be, you know, basically creating a project in Alberta is very exciting. Now, my understanding is that the results you got were uh, 100 and, just under 120 degrees uh, Celsius uh, downhole at uh, about 4,000 feet. And that is hot enough to uh, uh, generate electricity. Have I got that correct? That's correct. But it's actually much deeper than that. It's 4,000 meters. So for your American listeners, one kilometer is about 3,000 feet. So we're down a long way. And, and why, but why that's exciting, though, is because to produce power from, from a geothermal fluid, or um, what we need is temperatures basically above about 100 degrees centigrade. And at those temperatures, we're using what's called an organic Rankine cycle, an ORC, commonly referred to, which uses a secondary fluid to in fact run the turbine. And that secondary fluid is, is it has a variety of different, um, pentane is common, commonly used and various other kinds of fluids. But we can essentially create electricity above 100 degrees, though we would like it to be closer to 110 to 120. Right. And uh, what we were talking uh, before we started the interview about the cost of generating a megawatt hour of electricity, whether it would be competitive in Alberta's wholesale market where prices are actually quite low. And you, you suggested that uh, you're not sure yet because you know you have to do the engineering and so on before the, for the project. But secondary uses like uh, heating and, and other secondary uses would provide revenue that might make it economic. Absolutely. So the, the challenge in the Alberta market. So for geothermal, there is a, um, um, a, a group, an association. A, I'm not actually sure how they're, they're structured, but it's called LAZARD, L-A-Z-A-R-D. And LAZARD does a globalized level. Uh, they do a global survey for the levelized cost of power. And in that survey, they do everything from peaking gas to, to solar PV and solar thermal and whatnot. And what you find the levelized cost of power for geothermal they give it between $59 and $101 US dollars uh, per megawatt hour uh, per megawatt and and in the Alberta marketplace, it's going to be a challenge to get those kinds of prices. But what we can do in the Alberta marketplace, and this is specifically in Alberta because it is a deregulated market, is we can add, we can do the value added to our project. So it's not just produced power, it's using that thermal energy for all sorts of things, aquaculture, um, agriculture, greenhouses, uh, you know, food security is very important. Important now, we have um, an MOU signed with a company that does industrial composting with earthworms. So there's lots of additional uses for that thermal energy. So we add thermal energy, electrical power. We also will be obviously getting carbon credits. Those are very important uh, in terms of our economics of our operation. And then we're also investigating whether or not we can do CO2 sequestration, because then we're not just zero carbon, we're actually a negative carbon uh, facility. So we can help and support the oil and gas industry by being carbon negative. 
Now, I, I know you won't have a firm number on this, but I've talked to a number of economists lately who talk about the difference in value. In, uh, so the cost per megawatt hour is one thing uh, for intermittent and firm power, but you'll be firm power. You'll be uh, more like a hydro dam or a thermal plant, and that has a higher value than an intermittent value. So how does that play into your calculations? It's a really good question. Um, so th the problem when we're in a deregulated market for electricity is it's hard to monetize that value. You, we can monetize it in one way, and that is is by the carbon credits that we get to it. But in terms of of you know, what we try to say is that geothermal is the greenest of the green. So we are firm power. We're not intermittent like solar and like wind power. So we have, we have a small footprint. We have many of the attributes, but it's hard for us to actually get a dollar value for those additional attributes. That's why in the Alberta marketplace in particular, because the price of electricity is so low, we have to do these value added, CO2 sequestration, um, direct use applications, space heating. So we need to actually create a, an industrial cluster to make geothermal economic in Alberta. Now, uh, I understand that there's a fair, quite a bit of potential both in your area and in other parts of the province. How much potential do you think there is? So that's a really interesting question. There were some old reports that gave thousands of megawatts. We don't believe those. There are thousands of megawatts of thermal energy, but um, a, a recent, um, uh, recent report by the University of Alberta put the megawatts of power at about 1,000. And we think that is reasonable. Uh, 1,000 megawatts of power and 6,000 or more megawatts of thermal energy. Okay, uh, that sounds very interesting. Now you're going to be have have this project up and running by 2024. Uh, and will you be doing any other, you know, testing and, and project development while you're getting this one to completion? Well, we are obviously looking very closely at our sister projects. So there is a project in southern Saskatchewan called Deep Energy, and uh, they are about a year in advance to our project. And so they've been able to um, put out some very interesting, uh, encouraging news in terms of their temperatures and their flow rates. So we're watching them closely. Uh, we have an NDA with them, so we're able to share information. And the other project, which was just announced, is is Clark Lake in Northern B British Columbia. And all of these projects, so, so they're at, at about the same, um, you know, the same rate as we are. We hope to be producing power about the same time and drilling. Uh, so we're gonna be starting drilling, we hope in June or July, something like that. Uh, the Clark Lake already have, has a rig and it's an Akita rig out of Alberta, actually. Uh, yes, out of Alberta. Uh, that rig is on site and uh, they hope to be um, doing their first drilling in June. We're all waiting for breakup, obviously. <laughs> so we're watching those projects very, very closely and trying to get our first well spudded here and information directly from the specific location that we're, we are planning to develop in. Catherine, final question. Is there a possibility that uh, costs will come down over time as uh, developers uh, like the ones, your company and others that you mentioned, uh, get better at what they do and develop better technology and, and so on? Are, are we gonna see a, 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 the cost curve bend as the learning curve improves? Absolutely. So what the, the biggest cost, and the cost differential with geothermal is drilling costs. Now, what almost any driller will be able to tell you if, you know, no matter what they're drilling for, whether it's oil and gas or water or whatever, is those first wells are always the most expensive because in that specific location, you don't you know everything there is to know about the subsurface. So the first well is the most expensive, but typically your second well and your third well get cheaper and cheaper. I mean, they don't, unfortunately they don't get to zero, <laughs> but they're still expensive. 
expensive <laughs> because they're very large. But yes, um, the cost for the first project is more expensive than, you know, subsequent projects and the cost of the first wells are more expensive than subsequent wells. Catherine, good luck with your project. And thank you very much for this. Very interesting. No, thank you so much for the interview. And uh, yes, if your listeners have any other questions, just send them to you and uh, I will be happy to answer them. <laughs>